So welcome to algebra. <laughs> Last time we were talking about, we had started talking about factoring. We're still talking about factoring. So we had done finding the greatest common factor. So now we're going to move on to a new topic. Okay, so the first, so this is what? This is September. Wow. Okay. Goodbye, August. Uh, the first. That's not showing sure up. Can't see it. You can't see it. Oh, okay. Okay. <clears throat> so uh, the first bit that we need, just a remark uh, about monic. So a polynomial with leading coefficient. one is said to be monic. Okay, so for example, for example, uh, how about 5x squared minus 3x plus 4. Is this monic? No. So this is not monic. How about how about um, w squared plus nine? Is this monic? Yes, this is monic. Okay, so then our conversation will be significantly enhanced now that we have this vocabulary word. Okay, so then here's a remark about how to factor a monic quadratic. So a quadratic is a special is a, is a word for a special kind of polynomial. What kind of polynomial? Four. You might think it's, it sounds like it would be something doing with to deal with four. Yes. Yes. So that the polynomial is degree is degree two. Okay. So uh, a monic quadratic. So monic quadratics look like this. Monic quadratic is x squared plus bx plus c. So it's called a quadratic because the leading term is a square. The leading term is a square and a square is a quadrilateral. That's where the quadness comes in. <coughs> So to factor a monic quadratic, the way that you do it is you find you find numbers p and q such that the product pq is c and the sum p plus q is b. So most of you, I expect if you've had any algebra class before, you already know this, except I may be saying it in a way, in, in a way that is kind of stilted in, in math language. So let's do an example of this to, to show you that you probably actually already know this. Okay, so how about x squared plus um, 9x? And now I need someone to give me two numbers that, uh, that add to 9. Four and five, okay. So, so did, what did I just do? Did I just blow off the person who said four and five? Just forget your four and five. Yeah, multiply. No, right, okay. So then what we want to do is we want to find two numbers whose product is 20, whose product is 20, and whose sum is nine. Now, I know that I just queried the class for 4 and 5, so that it's it probably exceedingly obvious that the answer is 4 and 5. But let me show you how, 
how you do this. So the way you do it is you say, okay, how about 1 in 20? So what's the sum of 1 in 20? 21. 21. Is that what we were looking for? No. No. Okay. How about 2 and 10? That's another factorization of 20. How about the sum of 2 and 10? What's that? 12. Is that what we were looking for? No. How about, um, there aren't any others, so. So how about 4 and 5? What's the sum of 4 and 5? 9. Okay, jackpot. So does everybody see, ah, that's, that's what we were looking for. Okay, so then the answer is that the factorization is x plus 4 multiplied by x plus 5. Okay, so let's have another one. So how about, uh, please factor w squared plus 13w, um, and then let's think about this for a minute. How about minus 48? What do you think? Okay, I, I, I'm sure that you know, that you mean that you know what you mean, but 16 and 3 will not work. W right, positive 16 and negative 3. I'm sure that's what you meant, but mathematicians split every hair, right? <laughs> okay, so then it would be w plus 16 multiplied by w minus 3. How could you verify that this is in fact correct? Foil it back out. You could foil it back out. By the way, don't W's look like sideways threes? And vice versa? <laughs> okay, let's just move past that. So any question, of, any question about this before we move to the next thing? Okay, so what if, what if I ask you to factor a quadratic that's not monic? So, how to factor a non-monic quadratic. So in this case, uh, we want to factor ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, where a is, it could even be one, but it, now it can be any number. It could be like, it could be two. So we want to factor this, and the way you do it is you want to do, you want to find p and q such that you want the product pq. So formerly, when it was monic, what did we want the product to be? We wanted it to be c. That's what it was formerly. So it's, that's not the answer now. And I'd also like to point out that the horizontal space on either side of the equal is not the same, which is not my style. So I'm going to write something in there. Okay. What goes in there is A. So that A was, al was, was also there on the previous page. Because, because what was A on the previous page? Four. It was 1. So it was there. It was there. And it's, and it's there now. So we want the product to be, the product PQ to be the product AC, and we want the sum P plus Q to be the middle coefficient. So this really is the same thing as the previous page. It really is the same thing. 
except now we're going to do this and then we're going to um, factor by grouping and you'll see what I mean by when I do an example. Okay, so for example, uh, how about, how about 5x squared plus 7x minus 30. Uh, no, minus 6. <laughs> Sorry, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> so we want to factor this. <clears throat> so we want to find two numbers. Find the We want to find P and Q such that in this particular question, this specific question, we want PQ to be what? 30. Not 30. Negative. Negative 30. And we want P plus Q to be what? 7. So we're looking for two numbers whose product is negative 30 and whose sum is 7. So, so let, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it, since this is the first one, I'm going to do it in excruciating d detail. So how about 1 and 30? Is that, is that a factorization of negative 30? No. no. What? Why the 30? Because that's the product of the first and the last number, and, and it's negative 30. So is 1 and 30 a factorization of negative 30? No, right? So then how, how can I make this right? Make one, make one of them negative. Okay. Good. So what's the sum of negative 1 and 30? 29. Is that what we wanted? No. no. Okay. How about um, negative 2 and 15? What's the sum? 13. Is that what we wanted? No. no. How about, um, how about negative 5 and 6? <laughs> What's the sum? 1. Is that what we wanted? No. Oh, we, I guess we ran out of factorizations. Oh, okay, let's do that. Okay, so how about negative 3 <laughs> and 10? What's the sum of negative 3 and 10? 7. Is that what we wanted? Yeah. Ah, we found it. So does everyone see that you know, we, hit the, we hit the jackpot here? Okay. So we found what we were looking for, and this is how you, you, you work with what you found. So you take that quadratic, 5x squared plus 7x minus 6, and you break up this middle term, 7x, into these pieces. So this would be 5x squared minus 3x plus uh, 10x minus 6. So we broke this 7x into negative 3x plus 10. Okay. So now, there are four, we had, we had three terms, and we broke it into these four terms. So now we're going to make two groups of two. So this would be 5x squared minus uh, 3x, and then plus 10x uh, minus 6. So we broke it into two groups of two. Okay, now in each group we're going to factor out the greatest common factor. So in the first group, what is the greatest common factor? X. So we're going to factor out an X of the first group. And when you do that, what, what remains? 5X minus 3. Okay, good. What is the greatest common factor in this one? 2.
And when you factor out that 2, what do you have? 5x five, five, five minus 3? Didn't we already get that? Oh, so you're telling me that 5x minus 3 is common. So what can we do with that 5x minus 3? We can factor it out. So what I'm saying is that we can put a 5x minus 3 right here, and we should be able to fill this with the other stuff. So what goes here? X plus 2. X plus two. Because, so this will be uh, x plus 2, because this one goes here, this one goes here, and this one goes here. So do you see that we factored it by grouping? That's nice. Okay. So the procedure to the procedure to um, factor a non-monic polynomial is a little bit more involved than to factor a monic one. Yes. Okay, so let so I'm going to answer your question with a question. Okay, so <clears throat> what if we have um, say say ten uh, w, and then right here we have two w minus seven, and then plus uh, eight times two w minus seven. Suppose that we have that. I'm just, I'm just pulling this out of the air now. Do you observe, do you observe that this is common to both, to both terms? Okay, so, so that being the case, let's just call that, let's just call that red box. I'll call this green box. And I'll call this blue box. And let's ignore what's in the boxes. That means that when you have something of this pattern, it should be, it, and does, factor in this way. You get this, and then red box. Green box. Blue box. And then this plus is that plus. So it factors in this way. There's a, there's a common factor of, of red box. So that being the case, that means that we should be able to write this as factor out the 2w plus 7, or 2w minus 7 like this. What goes in here? 10w and then plus 8. Does that answer it? In the same way, as this one, notice, notice on this line, the penultimate line, the one before the end, that there's a common factor of 5x minus 3. So you should be able to pull out 5x minus 3 out of both terms. And when you do, since, since you asked, what will, what will the other factor be when you do that? So I'm putting you on the spot. It's hard to be put on the spot. X plus 2. OK. Other questions? OK, so let's do another one of these, since they're so enjoyable. <laughs> That's the right word, right? OK. So how about uh, 2x squared? No, let's make it w's. No, we use w's. Let's use z's. 2z squared plus 9z plus 9. So when you get good at this, when you've practiced these enough, you don't need to make that table. You can more or less probably do it in your head. So it's always we want two numbers such that something and, two num th and such that something else. Two numbers such that their product is what? 18. How did you get 18? Nine times two. Right, the product of the, of the first and last number. 
Two numbers whose product is 18 and whose sum is what? Nine. nine. So we want two numbers whose product is 18 and whose sum is nine. Well, how about one and 18? Will that do it? Okay, that'll be 19, that won't work. Uh, two times nine, okay, how about two plus nine? That's 11, is that what we wanted? No. I guess we ran out of options. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so what's the last option? Six and three. So, so six times three is 18, how about six plus three? That's nine. So does everybody see, ob observe that six and three is what we were looking for? Okay, that means that we can write 2z squared plus, now, should I write, should I write 3z plus 6z or should I write 6z plus 3z? That, that's my question to you. Yeah, commutative. It, it cannot matter. You can write 3z plus 6z, that's fine. You can write 6z plus 3z, that also is fine. So um, I'm gonna write, I'm gonna write 6z for, for no good reason. I'm gonna do it like this. It would have been fine to do it the other way. Okay, so we split, we split this 9z into 6z plus 3z. So now what? We make groups, so 2z squared plus 6z plus 3z plus 9. Now what do we do with these groups? We factor them, factor out the greatest common factor. So what's the greatest common factor in the first group? 2z. 2z. What is the greatest common factor in the second group? 3. Three. So now I want everyone to have the opportunity to fill in those blanks, so I'm going to give you just a moment because my experience tells me that a certain percentage of students have a difficulty with this one. So what goes in the blanks? z plus 3 right here. Okay, what goes in the other one? Z plus 3. Now supposing, supposing you factored this out and you, you did this and you found that it was z plus 2, say. Suppo suppose you arrived at this position. Suppose you got here. What, 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 can, not ha what can you not do now if, if you were here? You can't continue. You can't, you can't factor this out. If you get to this position and you have something like this, that means that you have made an, you've made an algebraic error above. Okay? It must be the case that this one is the same as that one. So if you get here, then that's a road, a road signal to you, right? Turn around. <laughs> so Z plus three. So observe that z plus 3 is now common. It can be factored out. So I'm going to pause and let you do this for a moment. So what goes in the blank? 2z plus 3. Any question about this one? Yes? So if I switched the 3z and the 6z and... Right here, you mean? Yeah, I can't do that. I don't think I know which way to go. So to, let me rephrase your question. What we did is we needed to figure out how to split 9 and I split it in this way, and I think what you're saying is you're concerned about what would happen if, it, if you split it in the other way. Yeah. You must get the same answer. 
you might have gotten these factors in the other order. Oh, yeah, okay, I did. I just wanted to make sure that you... Right, so the, all the, that, that's the only difference that, that it will make, is if, if instead of writing 6z plus 3z, you wrote 3z plus 6z, then these factors might be in the other order. Is that okay? Why is it okay? Because multiplication commutes. Right? Three times five is the same as five times three. So it so it cannot matter. And it you you as long as you don't make any algebraic mistakes, you will always get the same answer. Okay, any questions about this? Okay, so now, how about this one? Let's go back to the monic case for a moment. How about <coughs> how about um, x squared uh, minus 2x uh, minus 13. So you should be kind of hitting a roadblock a little bit, a little bit of sadness. Okay. So, so what are we supposed to find? Right. Two numbers whose product is negative thirteen, and whose sum is negative two. <coughs> so here, here's a question: Are there any integers? whose product is negative 13 and whose sum is negative 2? No, because you can exhaust all of those possibilities, right? 13 is prime, so it only has one factorization. So you can choose negative 1 and positive 13 or positive 1 and negative 13. And neither one of those will sum to negative 2. Does that mean that this doesn't factor? So here's a separate question. So the first question was, are there, any, are there two integers whose product is negative 13 and whose sum is negative 2. There are, no, there are no such integers. Here's a separate question. Are there any numbers whose product is negative 13 and whose sum is negative 2? And the answer is yes, there are. But they're a little less obvious. They're going to end up being something like 2 plus or minus the square root of 165 all over 2. <laughs> and you might not like that number. 2 plus, 2 plus the square root of 165 divided by 2. But, but those are numbers too, right? right? Numbers with radicals in them are people too. <laughs> okay, so we, can't, we don't have the means to solve this presently. Okay, but we will. So I, I'm just going to say, hmm, you know, and do this later. <laughs> so I'm, I'm foreshadowing, right? trying to tell a story. We're going to deal with this. We're going to deal with this later. So, that also means that also means you can deduce something, and that is that if I give you a quadratic monic or otherwise and I, and I give it to you for you to solve in in the short term, it must be solvable using the way that I've just shown you. Okay? But later when I give you one that's Monaco or otherwise, and I give you one, you might not be able to do it using that the way I just showed you. Okay, good. So how about this one? X squared minus 9. Not quite. So the first, the first, um, the first suggestion that I, f that I heard was this. Oh, wait. I'm not sure I, I heard what you said. I think you said x minus 3 squared. Okay, so is this right? No. Okay. Why is this not right? Because there's a x minus 3 and a x plus 3. Okay, so let me ask it like this. How could you confirm or deny that this is correct? You could foil this back out, right? Let's do that real quick. Remember, we have a formula for this. This would be 
x squared plus um, uh, plus three squared, and then what else would we get? According to the formula that we know, minus two times x times three. Right. So are these? So is this the same as that one? It's not the same. So does everybody see that? Okay. This was not the way. Okay, so at least the most immediately, the most immediate way to solve this is to say, well, isn't this x squared minus nine, isn't that equal to x squared plus zero x minus nine? Yeah, because all I did was add zero x's, that I didn't change anything. So now the question is, is here's a monic quadratic. Can you think of two numbers whose product is negative 9 and whose sum is 0. Negative 3 and positive 3, right? So x minus 3 and x plus 3. Okay, so that would work. You could do it in this way. <coughs> but there's a shorter way that I imagine many of you are having deja vu about if you, if you don't see it already, so I'll say or, a completely, a, a, a related way to do this, but different. So you could say, well, x squared minus nine, I could write that as x squared minus three squared, right? Because after all, nine is three squared. Okay, and this expression is the difference of squares. x squared minus three squared. And so last time I said a phrase that, con that contained the phrase difference of squares. So the difference of squares factors as what? Starts with P. Ends with product of conjugates. <laughs> <laughs> right, the pro the, okay, good, you got it, product of conjugates. Okay, so what, because for that reason, this must be x minus 3 multiplied by x plus 3. Okay, the expressions x minus 3 and x plus 3 are said to be conjugate to each other. So the difference of squares factors as the product of conjugates. And so now, that, that's, that silly thing that I say where I say I'm thinking of a phrase that starts with a letter and then if no one says anything then I say all of the other letters. So. I, I refer to that as the joke. So it's going to get old. On purpose, it'll get old, right? And so that's my, that's my, my threat to you, right? If you're not paying attention, then I'll do it. I'll make the joke. <laughs> it'll be bad every time. Okay? So let's try another one. How about, uh, how about mm, 16 x squared minus 25y squared. So this question is related to the previous one. It can be solved with a similar technique. The idea is that you want to you want to express this as the difference of squares. So we have two terms, this one and that one. Let's focus just on the first term. Is 16x squared presently expressed as a square? <coughs> not presently. It's not expressed as a square. How could you write 16x squared as one thing squared? 4x and then all squared, right? So this is 4x and then all squared. Okay, now how about 25y squared? Is that presently represented as a square? 
It's not represented as a square currently. Here's a separate question. Can you write it as a square? Yes. yes. How do you write it as a square? 5y all squared. 5y all squared. And so now, if, if I just cover this up, right, a little bit, then, it, then it's, right, then it's pinky squared minus index finger squared, right? Can you see it? So now we have the difference of squares. And how does the difference of squares factor? Product of conjugates. As, thank you. <laughs> so as the product of conjugates. So what, how, will th how will this factor then? So not 2x. 4x, right? It'll be it, it'll be this thing, my, so so cover up the squares. It'll be it'll be the first one minus the second one, plus the first one plus the second one, or multiplied by the first one plus the second one. So it'll be 4x minus 5y multiplied by 4x plus 5y. <clears throat> Any question about this? Okay, how about, how about please factor uh, w squared minus 7. So this one's a little disturbing. Okay, so then, so this question is again related to the previous two. And what we need to do is we need to write this as the difference of squares. Is it currently expressed as the difference of squares? Yeah. No. How about the first term? Is it a square? Yeah. It is. So the first term is fine. How do, you, how do you express 7 as a square? Mm -hmm. The square root of 7 squared. How do you express 16 as a square? 4 squared. How do you express 15 as a square? The square root of 15 squared. And so now I'm going to say the way that you express the square, the 16 as a square is the square root of 16 squared. squared. It's just, it just so happens that the square root of 16 is an integer and that humans are fascinated with integers. And there's nothing immoral or unethical about the square root of 7 not being an integer. <laughs> it's, it's fine. It really is fine. So then ha this is now the difference of squares. So how does it factor? Thank you. <laughs> w minus the square root of 7 plus w plus the square root of 7. And so now I'm going to write, I'm going to rewrite this one, except I'm going to write it in a disturbing way. So x squared minus 9, well, that is x squared minus the square root of 9 squared, which is uh, x minus the square root of 9 multiplied by x plus the square root of 9. Oops, plus the square root of 9. So many of you have a visceral, visceral reaction to what I've written here. It, is, what I have, is what I've written correct? Yes. Of course it's correct. But the reaction that you're probably having is that the fact that I've stopped and I've not written the square root of 9 is 3 is really disturbing. Do you? <laughs> because you've been psychologically conditioned that every time you see square root of 9, you need to write 3. So I'll do it, just to relieve your emotional tension. But it's the same as before, right? Good. Any question about this? Yes? Um, 
Okay. So, I, th I think what you're asking is, what about, what's wrong with this? Let's foil it out. If you were to do this, you would get w squared minus 7w plus 7w, right? First, uh, inside, outside, so I did those in the wrong order, sorry. And then what would the last, last one be? Minus 49. And then if you collect, this would be w squared minus 49. So now, you tell me, why, why is it, why is this not the answer? Okay, because it's wrong, okay? <laughs> so, so, because the w squareds agree, but the 7 and the 49 do not agree. That's why. You can always check your answer by multiplying it back out. Other questions? <clears throat> okay, so now we need to introduce, in the time remaining, we need to introduce a topic. Okay, so then here's the definition. The definition is called a rational expression. So a rational expression, this is the kind of expression that carefully thinks about all of its actions and plans them out accordingly, right? Yes. Surely that's it. No, that's not it. Right. right. <laughs> Good. So, so what a rational expression is, a rational expression is the ratio of two polynomials. So in this case, rational means ratio, like quotient and divide. So the previous two sections, we've dealt with polynomials and we said, okay, well, you can take two polynomials and you can add them. You can subtract them, you can multiply them. And then undoing the multiplying is called factoring them. So that's what we've been doing for the last two lectures. Now what we're doing is we're saying, okay, we're going to divide them too, so that you can have one polynomial divided by another. Okay. So for example, for example, how about x squared plus 1 divided by x minus 3? So this is, this is a rational expression, because the numerator is a polynomial. What's its degree? of the numerator? Two. two. And what is the degree of the denominator? One. Okay. So this is a rational expression. Could you plug in 10? Is that legal? Could you plug in 10 for x? Would it be okay? Yeah. Yeah. If you, if you plug 10 in the numerator, 10 squared is 100 plus 1, that'd be 101 in the numerator. What would the denominator be? Seven. 7. Now, you might not particularly like the number 101 divided by 7, but it's a legitimate number. Okay. Are there any numbers that you, it simply is not allowable, it's not permissible to plug in to this expression? Why not? You got something against threes? Right, so the numerator would be fine, right? If you plug in three, that'd be nine plus one, that'd be 10. There's nothing wrong with that. But the denominator, if you were to plug in three, you'd have a zero in the denominator and it's not legal to divide by zero. So is a rational expression and you can't plug in x is equal to three. So now I'm gonna leave you with a question. I'm not gonna answer it. We'll answer it next time, but I'm going to leave you with a question. Here's a rational expression. <clears throat> what numbers can you not plug in? Six would be fine. How could you tell? This one was easy, right? Have to factor it out. Ah. If you were to factor the denominator, then it would be clear what numbers you cannot plug in. 
and we'll deal with that next week. Have a nice weekend. No lecture on Monday. Be safe.